Good afternoon. Hi everyone. Nice to see you today. We are now in May and it's Mental Health Awareness Month in the States and it will soon be Mental Health Awareness Week in the UK. And today I'm going to be chatting with the legendary Zeta West to talk all about how to cope from a mental point of view whilst you're trying to conceive as it can be incredibly tough as many of you guys watching will know and I can relate to myself having just um, recently had a chemical pregnancy as well. So um, I'm going to see if Zeta is here. Please have any questions ready and we can take those and answer them live. Wisdom and she will be covering the impact that struggling to conceive can have on your mental well-being and finding stress and kind of coping techniques as treatment progresses. Hi Zita, how are you? I'm fine, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. It's lovely to see you. Thank you. Always. Um, <laughs> please introduce yourself to those who may not know who you are and um, we'll start talking about mental health when trying to conceive. Okay. I'm Zita West. I am a midwife for 40 years. I'm an acupuncturist. I set up a fertility clinic. I have a range of products called Zeta West Products and uh, um, also another little range of baby products called Baba West. Amazing. Um, your supplements range, which we've linked up in our bio, um, has supported me through four cycles of IVF. And we'll come on to talk a little bit about um, kind of mental well being, obviously, but also uh, preparing your body. Um, holistically for trying to conceive. Um, I, have to say, I have to say, Eloise, though, I cannot believe how much you do with your young children. And, I, you know, it just blows my mind away. <laughs> I would have thought you well, have mental health <laughs> issues with everything. <laughs> That's very kind of you to say. I think sleep is going to be one of the things I want to talk about because I don't get enough of it. And yeah. I notice when I haven't had enough of it. Um, but I, I know that you've launched your products in the US as well, which is very exciting. So for our <laughs> readers who are joining and watching this back in the US, um, they are now available, which is fantastic news. And uh, we can talk a bit about that as well. So thank you for the introduction. Hello to those who are joining live. Could you tell us a little bit, I mean, people will be knowing it for themselves, but the impact that struggling to conceive or taking longer than you knew anticipated, how can that impact your mental health in a negative way? I think it's really hard for women because on average it takes 12 months to get pregnant. And for some people that doesn't happen. And I think the hardest thing is dealing with uncertainty mm -hmm. and all these obstacles you've got to get over, going to work, a friend being pregnant, a work colleague, a relative, christenings, weddings. It does start to get you down. It's quite exciting in the beginning, but then, you know, it, it becomes really, really difficult. And I think what's so hard as well is that being told, when you feel low just to relax or try this or try that or get out in nature or go to bed early or don't drink it's impossible because you're not motivated and when you're not motivated and you're low it's hard to make yourself do anything mm -hmm. I mean as, as you know um, as a friend of mine and also from the support that you've given through supplementation and um, the hug meditation um, I had a frozen embryos transfer just two months ago, which resulted in as a chemical pregnancy. And going back into the throes of trying to conceive again, it's amazing how even if you, in advance of that process starting, think, well, this time it's going to be different and I'm not going to, um, you know, I'm going to be prepared for the outcome. You never are because it affects you in ways that you didn't anticipate potentially. And also the response that you get from loved ones, friends, family, can be different and not yeah. potentially, not always what you anticipated or wanted. And that can be a challenge on your mental health as well. Um, oh, the level of because, yeah, the level of support, but also people, you feel like people are criticizing you and it's, it, and it, it's really difficult. And I think the relationship you have with your partner, if you have a partner is important because men view this differently you know they are far more optimistic that it's going to work than than a woman is mm -hmm. absolutely yeah um my husband when this cycle didn't work he um 
sort of didn't really react at all until a couple of days afterwards and then got quite upset about it momentarily. And I couldn't tell whether that was about the cycle not working or whether that was about seeing me so upset. But yes. it is a shared experience, but it can affect, it can sort of hit people at different points in the journey, can't it? Oh yeah, abso absolutely it can. And you know, like for, for, for me, the biggest thing is, and I'm always amazed at the amount of women that come through that are on antidepressants, um, because, you know, again, they need the antidepressants, but the fact is that what is hard is then you're worrying about taking antidepressants and if you're going to be mm -hmm. pregnant or not. Absolutely. Yeah. And so in terms of stress, and, and it's a difficult one because you're told not to be stressed to help your chance of conception, as we are in Mental Health Awareness Month in May in the States, and also Mental Health Awareness Week coming up in the UK, what would be your top holistic tips for helping people feel prepared um, for whatever stage of a fertility journey or struggle they might be experiencing? Well, I think the word stress is banded around too much. And stress isn't just about mental and emotional stuff. You know, there are stresses in the body, emotional triggers that, that happen as a result of somebody being pregnant and you not. There's nutritional stresses from what you, what you eat. Um, and for me, fertility has always been a whole body event. It's not just something that happens in the fallopian tube. So, you know, when you strip it back a bit, like gut health is really important. Um, so if, you know, if you're feeling low and down, etc., just start to think about what you can do. So the gut, we know so much more now, Eloise, about the microbiome mm -hmm. in the gut. The amount of women I see that have got irritable bowel um, syndrome, constipation, diarrhea, means that every hormone you make, and the, for, you know, for healthy eggs and sperm, is through the diet and the food that you eat. So if your gut is out of sync, you're taking uh, antibiotics, you're having lots of process, processed foods, then that is going to have its impact. So, you know, looking at what you can do um, to improve gut health. And again, 90% of serotonin, which is a feel good hormone, is made in your gut. So there is a link between now, between depression and the gut microbiome. So making sure that you have fiber, fiber is very good for the gut microbiome. Um, omega-3, vitamin D, all of these things can be really helpful. And the gut has a different microbiome to the vagina. So making sure that you're taking probiotics also will help. And that way you are building slowly and repairing your gut, which leads then on to the, um, to the brain. And again, you know, women are ruled by their moods, their foods and their hormones, and they will feel different at certain times of the month. And people watching this, if you know, what happens is you've been good all month and your period comes and it's like the sodic factor kicks in, you <laughs> eat the cake, you drink the wine and you beat yourself up mm. for the next for the next time. And, you know, I just think you need to do it in little bite sized chunks. So if you've got issues with your gut, really build up um, your fiber, your your nutrition, you know, non-processed foods, building some treats as well. And again, you know, looking after your, your brain health. There's a lot of research now to show um, certain nutrients can really help. And again, your brain is ruled by the food you eat, you eat in terms of how, you know, how you feel. So, you know, if you're constantly snacking, eating lots of sugar, you're just going to have this yo-yoing effect that goes on. And then you end up, choosing poorer choices um, mm. because you haven't got the nutrients and you're you're depleted so you know you, you're not building your energy and this is all about at the end of the day energy because it really doesn't matter Eloise whether you produce an egg each month or whether you produce sperm you're not going to die because of it but your energy will go to different parts of of your body to keep you keep you going so building up that tank is more important than than you may think. Mm -hmm. You've raised a very good point because I want to talk about sleep and yeah. then the lack of sleep and then making poor choices health wise yeah. because you go for sugary foods yeah. and it's a struggle to get through the day, etc. Before we do, you've touched on the vagina, well, the gut microbiome and the vaginal microbiome, yeah. which I didn't realize was so linked to mental well being and how that can sort of change uh, your mood and also the way your body is feeling more generally rather than being localized to that area. Yeah. 
you know, in the last couple of months, as I mentioned, I have, I've taken the z 2 supplement range and um, during my FET cycle in February, leading up to it in Jan and Feb, I was taking FEMC to support my vaginal microbiome. Um, um, that, that is, you know, I was really excited about that product because it's got the science and the research to back it. And so again, it's not just about trying for a baby. If you've got any sort mm -hmm. of other issues going on, vaginismus, thrush, all of that, it can really help. And it has been shown that um, it can help with um, implant, it may help with implantation. Mm -hmm. But I was very excited to take it too. And I'm, I'm still taking it today. Um, and that's because five years ago when I was having IVF, I didn't take anything like that because I didn't know anything about yeah. it. And I feel like there's so much more available to us now to support our bodies, um, especially with the advances with your range, for example. And so people want to read more about uh, the vaginal microbiome and some of the different supplements, vitamin D, for example, which we should talk about with um, uh, sort of tiredness and, and general well-being as well. Then yeah. we should head to our link in bio. Um, we have a code which is TRB, so the ribbon box TRB10, and that will give you 10% off the entire range um, in the US and the UK, so shipping um, to the US now, which is fantastic news. Um, so yes, I wanted to say that about the vaginal microbiome because I think that's extraordinary and I, I'm excited to continue taking that. Yeah. Um, vitamin D, again, of course, it was winter, but I had my levels checked before my frozen embryo transfer in January, and I was borderline low. Oh, um, really? Yeah. So oh. I, was, I was then taking 4,000 sprays um, yeah. a day, and it's now risen to a really good level. Yeah. And I can... again, the like depression and being yeah. low is linked to low vitamin D um, in the brain, as well as, you know, there's receptors on the ovaries. So it's increasingly really important. Especially Especially if you're living in a country like the UK and you're not yeah. seeing a lot of sun. Yeah. Um, it can yeah. be really challenging if you're working all day indoors, yeah. for example. But also, so, if, you're, you know, if you're black or Asian, your vitamin D is likely to be lower. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So do you advise most people to get their vitamin D levels checked as a starting I think, point? I think, it's, I think it's difficult because not everybody can afford to get their vitamin D levels checked. I mean, certainly we did it at the clinic uh, prior to women going and men going through IVF. Um, I think it's worth taking in the winter months, but you've got to be aware as well, without monitoring it, um, high levels of vitamin D can be toxic. Right. So, okay. you know, it's just important that you you, you, you you do what it says on the bottle unless mm -hmm. you're prescribed it by um, somebody else, you know, a doctor or nutritionist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. I should caveat that I was seeing a nutritionist. Yeah. You know, um, felt comfortable in the range that I was taking of your supplements because everything was carefully measured to support my unique journey yeah. and what I needed for a frozen embryo transfer at that time based on my blood test results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's interesting as well, though, Eloise, is that you know everybody comes to fertility with their own unique set of baggage, yeah. emotional baggage from the past, the present, the future, how they were brought up, their relationship with their mothers, what traumas they've had along the way. And I think that it's important to bring that in to the, 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 whole, um, the whole area. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the questions I always ask was there any emotional, physical, sexual abuse um, that, that went on because that can have its impact and sometimes it can come back when you when you get pregnant again I see many women that have had IVF that have struggled for a long time to get pregnant they get pregnant and the anxiety is through the roof mm -hmm. because they know everything about fertility but they know very little about being pregnant and I know that we had one question through I don't know whether you saw okay. it um, and it's an important question that I always ask is is there anything that you feel is happening for you that's stopping this from, from happening, from getting pregnant? And very often it will be, I had a termination in the past, mm -hmm. that's God's punishment, I'm not going to get pregnant again. Um, or, you know, I was abused, I've got low self-esteem. So all of these, that those mind-body blocks are very, play a very important role mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But that, you raised such a good point about going crazy on Google. And I was really trying very hard with my recent cycle to not do that especially with the river box and the four years of doing this um with the community i didn't think i would fall into that trap and i did 
And, you know, one comment from whoever it might be, even the specialist, can send your mind spiraling. So I went in for a routine scan. I had a, um, I had a sounding before the transfer. And we found out that I have quite bad C-section scarring. Um, and that's, that was something new to me that I found out just before the transfer. Yeah. Um, and apparently that wasn't going to be a, a big concern, but it was making the transfer more difficult. So straight away I was Googling, you know, what are the chances of implantation with C-section scarring? So I can see how the mind can really spiral out of control when you really want something to happen. Yeah. And you can't. And, and going, going through that whole procedure, like many women do, you, um, I knew that Amazon would start knocking on my door <laughs> soon. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to ignore it. Um, but, you know, the important thing is that um, I've lost my train of thought now. What was well, I? We have, we have another question. Oh. Right, okay. Um, someone has said that they had a miscarriage in 2021. They did a procedure to stop um, this person, lady having um, him and Jay. It's 2023. Haven't received a full mistral yet. Um, I wonder if that's a kind of summary or doctor's kind of summary about what happened. I don't but know, I but in my to... answer to your question, I remember what I was saying now. Oh, yes, please. That when you're going through, um, every single thing is important. And so if a doctor or a nurse says to you that your womb lining is a millimeter yeah. less than it should be, if you got only a couple, you know, you play on absolutely mm -hmm. everything. I remember going into one consultation years back and my lovely doctor wasn't there that day so someone else um, did my scan and the first thing he said to me was you don't have as many eggs as last time but that's probably due to your age and then that and then you're left for the day at 7 a.m being delivered that news and thinking okay so this, this is day two of the cycle I know, whatever it I know. Is. and it's already really, not looking really great hard. how do you kind of get move on from that no it's it's difficult and you you do need the support and the help um emotionally so it's but again you know like women lose connection when they're going through this yeah. because their friendships change the way they feel about themselves change they're no longer the woman they were they lack confidence they lack courage yeah. and they don't feel like they've got control everything over anything so it's 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 really difficult zita what are your preparation tips for anybody watching um, whether they're just starting out for the first time, whether they're going back uh, to fertility treatment or trying to conceive naturally um, after a break, what would be your pointers and, and tips? I think the first one is managing your expectations. One, if you're trying naturally of how long it can take to get pregnant. And the second is that IVF isn't the golden nugget. You know, very often it doesn't work the first time mm -hmm. round. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter whether you've got the best eggs in the world. I've seen that not work and I've seen the you know the, the the poor little embryo that is not meant to be work so I think it's important but like everything hindsight is great when you first start off you're quite new to it in terms mm -hmm. of what you're going to be doing aren't you so I think that's one I think mindset is really key because if your mindset is not if your headspace isn't right then you can't you can't make decisions, you make poor decisions and choices. So if you've got building a house, moving a house, doing an extension, traveling, all of that, don't throw IVF into the mix. You know, wait until you've got a slot. Two months is not gonna make any difference to your case mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in terms of preparation, because I know some people, and I've been there myself, think, well, I had that drink, so maybe it didn't work because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Or I did take the supplements for long enough so maybe that was why would your advice be to do the things that are going to make you feel that you're not going to feel guilt about so for example yeah. you've got the time putting in the steps to take the right supplements for you yeah, um, i mean there's lots, there's lots of supplements you can take there's a lot we know now about egg and sperm health that's why we do the, the kits we do the ivf kit etc but i think that the um what is important is that you prepare by resting you know don't go and flog yourself at the gym you know take it easy go to bed build up your reserves i've been talking a lot about reserves that's really really important to do look at your life work balance about what's going on for you because if you've got too much on it's it's too much to throw this into the mix mm -hmm. as well so i feel 
if you're, you know, when you're motivated, Eloise, when you feel good, you can cope with anything, can't you? Mm -hmm. But when you're tired and you're depleted of energy, that's when it's hard to cope. Absolutely. Absolutely. And from a nutritional standpoint, any tips? Yeah, I think um, if you're going through IVF, protein needs change. So you need to sort of look at what you're eating. Um, if you're vegetarian or vegan, you've got to work even harder to get the protein that you that you require. I think, you know, manage your expectations when you get to the clinic, learn to breathe, learn to visualize, do all of that because all IVF clinics run late. And so, you know, <laughs> breaking up from work for a scan that hasn't happened, it's going to really, really throw you in terms of what's going on for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Um, and what about with sleep? This is something I've always wanted to know. Is it the amount of sleep that you have consecutively or is it the overall amount? So if you have eight hours, but it's very broken, is, is that going to rest your body or does it need to be a solid seven hours? Well, you know, there's, there's so many theories out there, aren't there? I think that going to bed early is important, especially when you're you know going through IVF, not having alcohol, caffeine or anything before you go to sleep because that is going to make you wake up. Um, you know, doing a visualization, relaxing yourself before you go to sleep. But you know, it's easy to say this, Eloise, and you've been through this. Um, when you're trying for a baby, when you're going through IVF, it's a three o'clock in the morning that kills you when everything's going around and you feel that the world is gonna end. Then you wake up at seven or eight and you realize it's not gonna end and it's absolutely okay. But for that short period of time at mm. three. You feel very alone. Yeah, very low. Very and alone. alone. Yes, yeah, mm. absolutely. And you're right though, when you feel rested and you feel that you've got fuel behind you, it feels like you can take on the world. Yeah, and fuel, but when is, you're not, is, important. fuel is energy, it's so important. Mm -hmm. So anyone watching, please go head to our link in bio to have a look through the Sea to West supplement range to support any part of your trying to conceive journey. Use code TRB10 for 10% off. And all of these supplements are now available in the USA, which is amazing. Um, Zita, just before we end, any holistic suggestions to calm the mind? You've mentioned mindfulness, and I have experienced your hub course, which sent me to sleep, which is what oh, I wanted, <laughs> in a good way. Um, so, so, yeah, any thoughts on the holistic side as well? Yeah, visualize. I think guided visualizations that I do through HUG are really important. But also there's lots of therapists out there and good therapies you can have, such as reflexology, acupuncture, hypnotherapy, counseling. Um, all of these are going to offer you support. And if you find the right practitioner, that is a friend for life because they will really support you through everything that you're doing. I think the question earlier was about fertility acupuncture, wasn't it? I can't see it now, but um, you have great experience in fertility acupuncture. Yeah. Um, a lot of people ask, when might be a good time to start it? What are the benefits? How do they help with this overall holistic health? What are your thoughts on that? I think acupuncture is really, really, really good uh, alongside other um, therapists as well. But I'm an acupuncturist, so that's the therapy I know the most about. I think in the lead up to IVF, it can be really, really useful. A lot of women have it during the stimulation phase and they have it um, after, before and after transfer. Um, the studies that have been done show that it helps with beta endorphins, which are the stress, you know, dampening down stress hormones. It can help with pelvic blood flow. It can help emotionally support you when you're, mm -hmm. when you're going through. And the beauty of something like acupuncture, it's a completely different model of medicine to Western medicine. So it, you know, it really sort of looks at the root causes of what's going on for you. So everybody is different. It's very much individualized. Mm -hmm. And just thinking about, um, immunology um, in terms of kind of stress levels and because I suffer from uh, chronic urticaria where I come out in an itchy rash yeah. um, and I take antihistamines and that's been happening for years um, yeah. there's be something underlying there but when I'm stressed it gets worse yeah. Um, yeah. and yeah. do you think that by um, improving your lifestyle and looking at the supplements you're taking you can support your body for those kinds of responses as well yeah I do, because it's all about the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Like your nervous system, if you're, we're all hardwired differently to, to cope with stress. But if you're constantly in this 
um, fight and flight mode. Um, it, cortisol levels go up, um, everything like that, you know, starts to happen, adrenaline's released. And women are very good at exercising and looking at their diet. They're not great at spending 15 or 20 minutes alone just listening to a visualization or, or breathing. And I think it's important that we encourage that as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's great advice. Does anyone have any questions for Zita before we finish? Um, everything you've said today has been really, really insightful. As always, I love speaking with you. Um, and all of these sort of stress relief tips, nutritional tips um, are great because they all work together to support people. And it's just small tweaks. You can't expect somebody to suddenly, and this is what a lot of women do, change their whole lifestyle change you know just do little bits mm -hmm. at a time wouldn't you also say that it's never too late so don't think no it's never well too i've late. only got six weeks before my treatment so yeah. what's the point yeah. now do the best you can for you mm -hmm. great well thank you so much sita um really really insightful as I mentioned, please do everybody head to our link in bio, look at the range and the support through the C2Y supplements range. Um, use code TRB. And also, our nutritionist does do a 15, a 15 minute free consultation. There we go, even better. That can get you off to the best start possible. So, yes, TRB10 and the nutritional consult. Um, and as I mentioned, I'm a huge advocate because I've been using your supplements for many years and I'm taking them daily at the moment. Good. So, um, uh, yes, I, I do think the holistic side is hugely important. Um, so, thank you for everything you do and thank you so much for speaking with me today. Oh, pleasure, Eloise. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.